Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. In my last video, I briefly touched on 1 John 1, 9 confession, which is, well, it's a, it's a topic that needs to be addressed more fully. So I decided it was best to do just that before moving on with Romans. Now, I understand that this can be a very sensitive subject, so in order to understand the message that the Holy Spirit intended to convey, I'm going to have to slaughter a sacred cow, or two. Now, I hate having to do that, but I also believe that if the truth concerning this subject was taught by mainstream Christianity, there would be no sacred cow to slaughter. So I'm going to share with you all what the text actually says about this. And as usual, I don't ask that you agree with me on this, but to study the text for yourself and to draw your own conclusions. The truth is not this channel. The truth is the Word of God. So I've written down 10 bullet points that I thought I'd discuss regarding 1 John 1 9 confession. And those are context, fellowship, joy, walk, confession, forgiveness, cleansing, reckoning, frequency, and direction. Now the context. The context is fellowship. That means several things. It, it's not a verse that says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins where that we'll be born again. Redemption is not in view here. Fellowship is. It's addressing God's people. Most Christians really, they realize this distinction, but there are many who do not, believe it or not. And secondly, there's the meaning of the word fellowship, which means to have in common with. Light has no fellowship with darkness. It never has and it never will. Therefore, what is in view here in this passage is the child of God having something in particular or in common with the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Because something in particular is being discussed, and as we study through the passage, we're able to see just what that is, which brings us to the matter of joy. Verse 4, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Now, two things here. The, the maybe is in the mood of uncertainty, the subjunctive mood. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. And the word full means complete. In fact, in the, in the original text, the word is complete, which means filled up. The word in the original Greek is complete, and it's a perfect passive participle, something that occurs at, at some point in time where the, the results of that action continue on into the future, and the passive voice says that the subject, which is in this case is us, expressed by the word your, is acted upon and is not the subject of the action, or not the one that does the action. It's a passive. God does it. It's also in the optative mood, the mood of expressed desire. Therefore, the text is saying that it's God's desire that He make our joy complete. Romans 15, 13, we read there that the text says that may, may feel is an aorist. The aorist tense sees the action as a whole. Uh, and verse 5 emphasizes the truth of God. The truth of God. Verse 6 shows us that we can uh, believe that we have fellowship with God when in fact we do not because that having in common with is not based on truth or light, but rather darkness, which is related to a lie. Apart from truth, there is no fellowship with God. Which brings us to another point on my outline, which is the word walk. Walk as in a pattern of behavior rather than uh, an individual act. Verse 7 is telling us that if we walk, if our behavior, our conduct is in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. 
most read this verse and they fail to realize just what it's saying. It is expressly stating that we are being cleansed from all sin as we walk in the light. Therefore, we are sinning as we walk in the light. Just because we are walking in the light, which is the truth of God's Word, doesn't mean that we stop sinning. The text is not saying that if we cease from sinning, we'll be walking in the light. It says that we are being cleansed from all sin as we walk in the light. The text is not saying that, that if we cease from sinning, we'll have fellowship with God, or, or that if we do not cease from sinning, we won't have fellowship with God. Fellowship with God is our having something in common with God, which is based on our being in agreement with the truth of the Word of God. And it, it is with these facts in mind that we are now confronted with the issue of confession. Okay, this is where we first come into the real crux of the matter here, which is where modern Christianity has wandered off into an area of what I believe is Romanism as it regards 1 John 1 9 confession now why do I say Romanism because though modern Christianity has rightly re rejected human priesthood as a mediator it has retained the method as it regards confession of sins it's abandoned the mediator while retaining the method which is naming one's sins a little different than Roman Catholicism that is simply not what the word confession means. The word is homilageo. I've pointed this out in the past, which means to speak the same thing as, to say the same thing. Now, I didn't make that up. That's the def definition. That's the biblical definition of the word confess. The word confess is an English translation of one word in the Greek, which means to speak the same thing. If I said that you were my friend and you agreed with me that that was true, you would have confessed in the biblical sense of the term, of the word homologeo. It's a compound word. It's from homo, meaning the same, and legeo, to speak, to speak the same thing. Verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And there we see the exact opposite of homilageo, confess. God says we have sin, we say we do not. You know, are you getting this? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. There, there's no confession, which carries us now then into verse 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say the same thing that God has said about our sins, that's sins plural, this is not sin singular, as in the, the source of sins, the sin nature, or the old man, but sins plural. And just what is it that God has said about our sins? Colossians 2.13, And you being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. I say, as God says, praise God, all my sins have been forgiven, and I have just confessed according to 1 John 1 9. Now, going the opposite direction again is verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, we need to look closely at the word forgiveness because it's a different word in the Greek from our being forgiven of all trespasses. The word in Colossians is charizomai, meaning to show favor, uh, give freely. And the word here in 1 John 1, 9 is a theomy, another compound word, meaning it's from two words, apo, away from, and uh, uh, hemi, or sin, which means send. Properly, it means send away, uh, release, or discharge. Since the context is one of fellowship, not redemption, the, the grammar states, if we confess our sins, and that's in the subjunctive mood, maybe we will, maybe we won't, our sins may be forgiven, may be forgiven, another subjunctive mood, and we might be cleansed, again, another subjunctive mood, of all unrighteousness. Maybe God will do it, if maybe we will. 
which explains the subjunctives. It has to be in the subjunctive mood, the moods of uncertainty, which is as good as saying that if we do, he will. It is not saying that maybe he will if we do. It's saying that if we do, he will. And what is that? Do what? Say the same thing that he says about our sin. So we are being cleansed from all sin as we walk in the light of the truth that God has in fact forgiven us all our sins, which means we will be sinning as we walk in the light of that truth because we're being cleansed of sins as we walk in the light, which brings me to another reality on my timeline or my outline, which is reckoning Romans 6.11. This is very important here. Romans 6.11 reckoning Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are to daily. It is a present active imperative. It's a command. It's the first command given in the New Testament. Count it as true ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, that, we, that we've died to sin. This is referring, not, not that we should die or might die or ought to die, that we, but that we are dead to sin. That we have, in fact, died. Ye have died. That we've died to sin. This is referring to our old man, the sin nature, the source of all sin, the, the old Steve, the flesh, not the righteous new man. The old man that was crucified with Christ. This is an ongoing, daily activity of us as new creations in Christ Jesus, where that our focus is no longer on the old man but the new. It's a vital, ongoing activity where that the old man is relegated to the cross where he belongs. So here's my question to you. Are we to cease Romans 6.11 reckoning, lay that verse aside, in order to con confess all our known and unknown sins, plural, to God, in hopes that God will uh, send away, release, or discharge all that garbage on a regular basis, so that fellowship with Him may continue. Well, folks, if that were true, we would be faced with some very serious theological problems that, that come into conflict with one another. If 1 John 1 9 confession was naming our sins, then our being commanded by God to reckon ourselves dead to sin daily would make no sense. None whatsoever. We cannot abandon one truth for another. We can't lay aside reckoning for confession, and we can't logically do both. The truth is that we are not to focus on or become preoccupied with sins, period. Our focus is to be on Christ, not sin. And that's exactly what we see here in 1 John chapter 1. True confession is saying the same thing God has said about our sin so that sin does not become a constant hindrance or interruption as it regards fellowship with God and that our joy may be made complete. We could never possibly remember all of our sins anyway. And the idea of tagging some list of sins that, that we did remember with the words, well, and all unknown sins, is, is purely a method stemming from the vain imagination and invention of man, not biblical truth. Protestantism has erred by not understanding the comfort of grace within the text of 1 John 1 9 and has instead opted to borrow from Roman Catholicism a practice and a method of confession that is little different than a, a private confession session, you know, minus the priest. Now, a few final points. Frequency and direction. As to frequency, I assure you, God does not take pleasure in His children being preoccupied with sins all the time and confession in the sense that mainstream Christianity describes it. The entire New Testament declares just the opposite. So how often should we confess our sins in the mainstream religious sense? Once a year, once a month, once a day, twice a day, or all day long? You know, just walk around saying, God, forgive me all the time. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Every time that we think that we sin, 
there is no joy in constant, repeated sin and confession. I've never heard one Christian say, Oh, I'm so excited, I can't wait to confess my sins. The text places a tremendous emphasis on truth, light, and the way we are to walk as it concerns real fellowship with God. Word meanings, folks, are ignored as well as the grammar. You know, we, we might have gotten our mediator right, but our method is still just as Romanist as if we were back before the Reformation. It also needs said that the trap of modern 1 John 1 9 confession also leads to us warring against the flesh to overcome personal sin and that by means of law keeping as a rule of life. Show me a Christian whose sole preoccupation is with sins and the terrible guilt and, and oppression of 1 John 1 9 confession error and I'll show you a Christian that's laboring under the heavy yoke of slavery to both sin and the law. Now I hope I, this has helped clear this up somewhat. I hope and pray that this video has been a blessing and an, an encouragement to you people. I love you all. I truly do. I pray that your attention be drawn away from law to grace and from self to Christ. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.